we have another problem today and before we continue I want you to read the problem and try to see what the question is and see if you can understand it yourself so take a moment to pause the video and just go through the problem all right if you have gone through it welcome back so what's given is this connection a and b has been done for a long time so this tells us that this circuit was connected so this capacitor has been now completely charged by this battery and it must be charged to the voltage v okay and that's when equilibrium must have reached that's the whole idea behind this word long time meaning that equilibrium has reached and then we're going to connect a and c and when that happens C1 is going to get discharged because charges will now start flowing from this charged capacitor all the way to this uncharged capacitor. So there will be some charging process going on from C1 to C2. In this process, this, this capacitor is going to start losing some of its voltage and this capacitor is going to start gaining the voltage. And the question now is, at equilibrium, what's going to be the voltage and capacitor and C1 and C2 and what's going to be their charges? That's what we need to figure out. Okay, so let's solve this and since we are now interested in the case from A to C, I'm going to, I'm going to just copy a part of this particular question. So let me copy this. Voila. Okay, we are now interested in this part. So let's just rub this guy. We don't need this. Forget about this. And uh, we're going to connect. So this is the situation right now. C1 is completely charged. And the voltage on C1 must be equal to V. Okay? What's going to happen the moment I connect? That's the question. Uh, oops, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to connect these two. So let's write down the initial condition. Okay? So this is initially. This is the moment I connect the switches A and C. This is initially. We know that capacitor C1 is fully charged, and the charge on the capacitor C1 must be equal to C1 times V and the charge on the capacitor C2 must be C2 times the voltage on this capacitor which is 0. That's going to be just 0. And then for the total charge on this system must be equal to C1 times V and that's going to be important for us. Now let's try and find out what's going to happen eventually and Let's not forget the charge over here is going to be positive. It's not really important. And on the plate over here is going to be negative. And that's because the positive plate was connected over here. Okay, now that's not really very important. So let's draw a situation at electrostatic equilibrium. At equilibrium. Okay. So this guy is going to start getting discharged. So the capacity so the charges are going to start moving from here to here this way positive charges I'm showing the direction of positive charges and because of this the voltage is going to start dropping eventually this capacitor also gets charged up and finally you will see the voltage on both the capacitors will be the same and so the new voltage over here is going to be V dash which is going to be smaller than V and even this capacitor eventually is going to get a voltage V dash our goal is to calculate what this voltage V dash is because if we do that then we can calculate the charges on the capacitor. How are we going to do that? Well, if we calculate the equivalent capacitance across these two points, let's call this point X and Y. So this is X and this is Y. If we calculate the equivalent capacitance over there, notice the two capacitors are just in parallel with each other. So we can, I can just represent these two capacitors this way. This is C1 plus C2. It's two capacitors in parallel. And the voltage across them, oops, the voltage across them is just V dash. Do we know what the charge on them should be? At first you might say, hmm, we don't know. But actually we do. And that's the whole idea behind this problem. We know that the charge over here, total charge, should be the same as the total charge over there, charge conservation. So that's the principle we're going to use. Okay, total charge should be conserved. So total charge is conserved. Because total charge is conserved, I know for sure that the charge over here, Q, has to be the same as this value. That's Q1, sorry, C1 times V. And that's 
what we need to solve this problem. Because now we know that the charge must be equal to capacitance times the voltage. So we can use the capacitor equation Q is equal to C times V. Alright, so we can use that. So the total charge is C1 times V, that's the total charge. That should be equal to total capacitance, that is C1 plus C2. Uh, I don't know why it's lagging on this. Times V dash, and therefore we now have what V dash is. We now know what V dash is. That's C1V divided by C1 plus C2. And bingo, that's what we wanted. So here is the voltage. So this is going to be the voltage V1 and V2. That is the voltage across each capacitor. Now that we know the voltage, we can calculate what the charge on each capacitor is. So the charge in capacitor C1 is just C1 times the voltage. So that's going to be C1 square times V divided by C1 plus C2. The charge on the capacitor C2 would be Q2 is equal to C2 times the voltage. I hope you're understanding what I'm doing. Charge CQ1 is just C1 times the voltage and charge Q2 is just the C2 times the voltage. So that's going to be C2 times the voltage which is just C1V divided by C1 plus C2. And there are answers. That's what we needed. Done. So I hope I was able to give you some intuition behind how we can solve problems when one capacitor is discharging and the other capacitor is charging. Alright, that's all for now. See you next time.